Hi, Blackie and Son from Glasgow was one of the leading Scottish publish book publishers around the British Commonwealth or former empire. The farm was established in 1809 by John Blackie, that was his name, in partnership with a couple of others. In 1819, they began printing their own books. In 1830, they moved to Glasgow. In 1831, uh, the partnership changed and it was Blackie and son, his sons, three sons, joined him. Walter, who was the scholar, he, he knew all the Latin and everything. Uh, John Jr., who was the Lord Provost of Glasgow, and Robert Blackie, who was a patron of the arts. So that was Blackie and son. Now, initially, Blackie sold subscription books, you know, books by subscription. They were subscription booksellers uh, to educational giants of the time. And then they had religious texts and reference books. And then they had single volume publications and educational books and moved to children's books. It was Blackie who published authors including Angela Brazil, G.A. Henty, George MacDonald and so on. We'll talk all about all those authors eventually on this channel. With the Education Act of 1870 passed in the UK, education became accessible to everybody. And Blackie and Co, this is why I'm saying that everybody uh, who lived, who, who has had ancestors who lived in the British Commonwealth would have heard of Blackie. Uh, Blackie was the leading textbook publisher for the major part of the British Commonwealth for a very, very long time. My mum had Blackie textbooks for her primary school days. Uh, I will do a separate video about, you know, textbooks, uh, vintage textbooks, and some of those were utterly delightful, particularly the English textbooks, you know. In 1890, it became a public limited farm. During World War II, they manufactured 25 pound shells and aircraft radiators in their facilities. So from their small beginnings in Scotland, Blackie and Son grew to have offices in Charing Cross in London, Edinburgh and Glasgow, Scotland, as well as India and Canada. You find the addresses given there. Blackie and Son, India Limited, Warwick House, Fort Street, Bombay. Blackie and Son Limited, Old Bailey, London. Blackie and Son Limited, 17 Stanhope Street, Glasgow. Blackie and Son Canada Limited, 1118 Bay Street, Toronto. I wonder what exists on all these, you know, addresses at the moment. I'd love to go and see, but not during the coronavirus pandemic, of course. Maybe one day. Unfortunately, in 1991, the firm ceased publication. In the 1950s, Blackie began publishing retold classics. And then they had several series, you know, Beautiful England, Beautiful Scotland, Beautiful Ireland, Beautiful Switzerland, and so on. And then they had Blackie's famous books, Red Letter Poets, Blackie's story booklets, and Blackie annuals, the children's annuals from 1904. But I'm not going to talk about the annuals here. That is for a completely different video. We will do Blackie annuals, I promise. Today, I'm going to talk about the budgets from Blackie. These were collections of short stories that were published annually. There were different variants in this range. There was the boys' budget, the girls' budget, the big girls' budget, the big boys' budget. Sorry, big budget for girls, big budget for boys. There was the bands budget, the little ones budget, the golden budget for girls, the golden budget for boys, the lucky budget for girls, lucky budget for boys, the prize budget for girls, prize budget for boys. Quite a few publications there. However, all of these were smaller than the Blackie annuals and they were priced less than from Bla the Blackie annuals, which is why I think they were called the budget. Uh, but don't quote me on that. Not much is known about these books. I'm sorry, I, this is all that I was able to find. Agnes C. Blackie, a descendant, has written a history of the firm. Unfortunately, I've been unable to get my hands on a, a copy of this book, so yeah, this is the most that I do know. Now, the Blackie books were known mainly for stunning designs. This is because Talwin Morris was a, he was an artistic director from 1892 to 1911, and he brought in, you know, this was Art Nouveau at its, at its finest. And the Blackie brothers, the sons, were patrons of the arts, all of them. I mean, Walter Blackie commissioned Charles Rennie Mackintosh to design Hill House for him in 1910. And the motto of the farm was Lucem Libris Disseminamus. I'm pretty sure I'm butchering pronunciation. I haven't learned Latin, people. It means books are the instruments of enlightenment. 
I can completely get behind that motto. So Blackie books are known for their colourful designs and stunning illustrations. Because you know, And these are no exception. Again, they have colourful covers that extend to the back. Look at that. That is the full cover illustration. It's not just this part. Even on the spine, you know, the picture sort of extends there to the back. And inside, the print is large. The layout is, you know, it, you, you wouldn't mind reading this, you know, unlike the drab, boring double columns of, the dull double columns of, say, Chatterbox, which was a famous annual of the time. We talk about Chatterbox another time. And then there were the illustrations to go with it, both monochrome and multichrome. So let's talk about each of these budgets. What I do know is what I can infer from the copies that I have and from the gift inscriptions within these. So as I told you, these are short story collections. Some of them had poems in them as well. One such collection is the Bairns budget, obviously targeted at younger children, both boys and girls. And that is the front cover. And this one contains poems, as you can see, as well as stories. So this one contained some black and white monochrome plates in addition to the illustration. Yeah, plate, just a single side, yeah. The previous owner, or you know, the, one of the previous owners, I suppose, uh, enjoyed colouring. I think they've done a tremendous job. I wish I was half as talented, I can't colour to save my life. Beautiful water colour in that. There is indeed a colour frontispiece and a monochrome, I mean this is not a frontispiece, illustration there as well. And the contents page tells you that Ethel Talbot used to write for the band's budget and so did Evelyn Smith. Um, Ethel Talbot is an author about whom I will be talking, you know, very shortly on this channel, so stay tuned for that. Very prolific writer, I think she wrote more than 84 books for, ch for yeah, I wouldn't say children as such, maybe young adults. So the band's budget had 144 pages. And then we have the Lucky Girls budget. Obviously, these, the, the band's budget, the Lucky Girls budget, and the next one that I'm going to talk about there, more compact than the regular budgets. And this is according to the gift inscription dated to 1929 or thereabouts. And there is a color frontispiece. This is just 96 pages. It's smaller, really small. But the pages are thick, so it looks bigger. Again, this illustration is, you know, extends over the spine right up to the back. There are none of those gorgeous end papers that characterize the Blackie Children's Annual. And from the contents page, I find that Evelyn Smith and W.K. Holmes wrote for them as well. The next one that I'm going to talk about is The Golden Budget for Boys, also a compact publication. Again, 96 pages, that's all. And the illustration extends like that across the spine and the back cover. From the gift inscription, 
the prize inscription rather, a lot of these were given as prizes, particularly for Sunday schools. And the one that I have was given uh, as a prize at the St. James Sunday Schools Derby in 1930 to Stanley Flack. Well, if a descendant is watching, I paid good money for this. There was even the prize tag left. Sorry. Um, th there was, of course, a coloured frontispiece and the monochrome illustrations as well. And from the contents page, Geoffrey Hamilton has written for the Geoffrey Hamilton famous voice author. I'll talk about him on this channel shortly, I promise. And the story is, you know, obviously quite different from the girls' stories. There, there are, you know, war stories, army stories, and of course, school stories and adventure stories, but you know, lots of war and army, armed forces and air force and so on, flying squadrons, uh, typical of the time. This was 1930. There was no war on at the time. Yeah, flying squadron, nevertheless. Possibly due to the influence of a certain Captain W.E. Johnson, as Biggles, dare we say. Yeah, we'll find out more about Biggles in a minute. Now we come to the girls' budget. Now, this one is an early copy. Uh, they, there's no publication date. The inscription says this is September 1925, which makes you think that this wasn't a Christmas animal. With Love from Bobby, September 24th, 1925, I'm pretty sure that they didn't have Christmas animals uh, in September. I mean, there was no Christmas in July back in 1925. It wasn't so commercialized back then. And because this was early, the illustration ends here with the spine. There is no illustration on the back cover. Now, surprisingly, possibly because this was an early copy, no end paper, obviously, the frontispiece is actually monochrome. Very, very, very surprising. In addition to stories, there are also some poems in the girls' budget. The stories in the girls' budget are longer than the lucky girls' budget or golden budget. You know, those are more compact. It is the girls' budget and the boys' budget that are this size. These are 128 pages, that is the early one, and 160 pages, that is the next two that I have. From the price inscriptions, the gift inscriptions, I've got 1925 and 1931 here. However, after the 1925 one, there is a colored frontispiece. There is also a black and white frontispiece. Yes, so black and white and colour there. Now this on the other hand was a, possibly a Christmas publication because it was gifted for Christmas 1931 uh, at the St. Cuthbert Parish Sun Church Sunday School to Winnie Carhart. Earhart? It says C. That's definitely not an E. Because, you know, the C is printed in the same way, uh, written in the same way as the C for Christmas. Or maybe the Vicar needed better handwriting. <laughs> and in the 1931 copy, the illustration extends across the spine to the back cover. That is gorgeous. As also the third copy of the girl's budget that I have. This is again a later copy. Uh, I don't think it is now. It, it, there is a gift for inscription, but you know, it doesn't say the year. Here, though, there is no colored frontispiece. There's only a black and white frontispiece. So I think it is somewhere between 1925 and 1931. The stories are longer and there are multiple chapters per story. Now, here, that is the 1931 budget, you have black and white plates as well, which is not there in the other two girls' budgets that I have, which is why I think, you know, this was a later feature. Now, from the contents, I find that some of the authors who were writing for the girls' budget were Angela Brazil, C. Bernard Rutley, May Wynne, Ethel Talbot, Evelyn Smith, Christine Shondler, and so on. Some very famous names there, who we will talk about on this channel separately, you know, school story authors, most of them, so we will talk about their books on this channel, I promise. The boys' budget 
was the same size as the girls' budget with 160 pages. Uh, unfortunately, I actually don't have a copy of the boys' budget. I need to get one. The thing is, the girls' budgets here were collected by my mum. Uh, the lucky band, lucky girls' budget, the golden budget, and the band's budget, and the big budget were collected by me. But the girls' budget credit goes to mum for buying them. And she also has her collection of lucky onions. I'll show you those another time. Unfortunately, I she, you know, I, I asked her, why didn't you buy any boys? But she said, I don't know, maybe, you know, it was all the war. I didn't like all the war. Oh, well. And she liked Beagles. Weird. And then there is the sort of pace de resistance, the big budget for girls. The illustration does not extend beyond the spine. This is Mammoth, 192 pages. It is still smaller than the annual which was, you know, around 200, uh, more than 200 pages long, sometimes extending up to 228 pages. So this 192 pages, uh, I have different reports regarding the size. Some say that this was 9.5 into 7 inches. Others say it was 11 inches into 13 inches. The copy that I have is certainly 9.5 into 7. The budget for girls was slightly older girls, you know, not, not, uh, I mean, the band's budget, obviously, for youngest girls. The golden, uh, the lucky budget, I feel, came next, you know, in terms of youth. And then you had the prize budget and the golden budget, slightly older. And then you had the regular girls' budget and the boys' budget. But the big budget was for older girls, you know, girls who were, who'd either just left school or who were on the verge of leaving school, maybe considering careers and so on. Because a lot of these, are such stories. One of my favourite stories in the big girl's budget is by W.K. Holmes. Uh, it is um, that one of the students in a class is reading uh, a book, a novel, contraband, uh, during class and her teacher catches her red-handed at it and confiscates the book. Uh, obviously the students are not happy with the teacher for doing that because a novel, because the author is a very popular one. In the end, they find out that that particular teacher is actually this novelist writing under a pseudonym, which I thought was a wonderful twist, and I've just gone and spoiled it for you. You have a coloured frontispiece, which looks utterly stunning. There are no further plates. The stories are longer than in the regular girl's budget. And from the contents page, you see that the author has included C. Bernard Rotley, Doris Pocock, and J.P. Mill, who wrote Thrills at Heatherly School. We'll talk about all these authors separately. So the Blackie budget books were annual publications, but they were not, you know, as expensive or as prolific or as well done, you know, with fancy end papers and, you know, fancy illustrations as the regular children's annuals. They were indeed budget books, as the name says, and all of them were more compact, all of them were smaller than the regular annuals. And these do not contain novel-length stories, they contain short stories. Obviously, the band's budget and the little one's budget contain really short stories for younger children and smaller poems. But, you know, as the books become bigger, the, the length of the story Grows. Unlike the annual, which contained other articles, you know, not just fiction, uh, not just short stories, these mostly had just fiction, only short stories, absolutely nothing else apart from the odd poem. The illustrations were gorgeous, the paper quality very, very, very thick, still not quite as there as the children's annuals from Blackie. These are available a dime a dozen at uh, second-hand bookstores. For a song, um, do I recommend buying them? If you like reading short stories, definitely buy the lot heartwarming stories. I haven't noticed anything problematic in these particular books. Uh, you can't, you know, I mean, I can't, you know, tell you if there is anything problematic in all Jackie budgets. Blackie, not Jackie. Jackie is for another <laughs> video. Jackie was my mum's, you know, teenage magazine, as it were. I can't tell you if there was anything at all that was ever problematic in any Blackie budget ever. In the ones that I do have, I don't find anything problematic. That much I can vouch for. So these don't cost more than, you know, two quid, three quid, no, no more than that. Um, postage could, you know, vary because, you know, these are heavy books. 
But yeah, mostly, you know, people just want to get rid of these. Now, uh, people don't, I don't know, I, I wouldn't ever get rid of these. I want to have a China buzz them on to send Chinese, you know, children, whatever. So have you heard of Blackie and Sun? What are your thoughts on these books? Have you come across the budgets or the annuals? The annual was one of the most famous children's annuals in the UK. So have you heard of them? What are your thoughts? Have you read them? Have you had a chance to go through any of them? Do tell me all of that in the comments below. So that's all from me for today. Thank you for watching this video. Please do give me a thumbs up. Please do hit the subscribe button. Please do ring the notifications bell and I'll speak to you soon.